2024 marks 50 years since the discovery of Lucy, one of the oldest fossil remains of a human ancestor ever found. Lucy was discovered by paleontologist Donald Johansson, who joined us in studio to talk about how Lucy was found and the importance of the discovery. Don Johansson, good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You bet. I, the 50th anniversary of Lucy's discovery. First of all, who was Lucy? Lucy was a, uh, a human ancestor who lived 3.2 million years ago and was nice enough to die on the edge of a lake and be covered in sand and fossilized for 3.2 million years. And I came along in 1974 in no on November 24th, and I glanced over my right shoulder and I saw a piece of her elbow. And when I kneeled down to look at it, I knew it wasn't from a, uh, a, a monkey or an antelope. It w had to be from a human ancestor. Why do you think that? Because of the anatomy of it. You know, we spend our days in these labs studying the shape of bones and anatomy and function and so on. And I could tell right away that this, this had to be a human. But it was so tiny that it, it was quite surprising. And as I looked up this little slope, I saw pieces glistening in the sun. You know, it was 110 degrees or something out there in the deserts of Ethiopia. And I could see a bit of jaw, I could see a bit of arm, I could see a bit of leg, and I realized at that moment this was part of a skeleton of a human ancestor who lived and walked on that landscape 3.2 million years ago. Did you know it was a human ancestor that had yet been defined? No, I, I actually didn't know exactly who she was. You know, we give all of these complicated names to yes. these fossils like Australopithecus. And, uh, but there were aspects of her teeth which are, are changed quite a bit over time. And I could see that it looked much more ape-like than anything we had found before. And four years later, she was announced with a real tongue twister of a name, <laughs> Australopithecus afarensis. Holy smokes after the Afar region where she was discovered. And we'll stick with Lucy, if you don't mind. Right. Uh, that'll make it a lot easier. Okay, how big, how, how tall was Lucy? Well, that was one of the, uh, the mysterious things. Uh, looking at the length of her thigh bone, what uh, we call the femur, it was only about the length of a ruler. And the question was, was this a child? Uh -huh. Because it was so short. Well, we looked at the teeth, and we saw that the wisdom teeth were erupted, so she was a full adult. And at full stature, she was only three and a half feet tall. Wow. Now, from what I've read about Lucy, she could walk upright, but had the bones in the finger suggested she was still kind of a tree dweller. True? Well, no. Her hands, they had little curved bones, which may be a, sort of an evolutionary hangover when her ancestors were hanging around in the trees. Uh, but she was fully upright and walking on two legs, just as you and I are. Wow. Um, and how old was she, do you think, when she died? Well, the estimates with, that the people who study the details of her, the development of the teeth think that she probably was only about uh, 11 years old, 10, 10 or 11 when she died. Interesting. And you said 3.2 million years. I know for, for, it's, it's hard for us to fathom that long ago. How do you know it was 3.2 million years? Well, we, because there's a volcanic ash layer. Uh, just near her in the, in the geology, and there are crystals in that volcanic ash that can be dated. So she's actually 3.29, uh, 3, 3.19 million years, plus or minus like 50,000 years. So it's not necessarily the bones themselves, but what is surrounding the bones. Yeah, you can't date bones that old. The carbon-14 that people think of yes. only goes back to about 40, 45,000 years. <laughs> That's all. Um, okay, this discovery and the ideas and uh, just theories of human evolution, how did Lucy change those ideas? Well, Lucy brought about a, a really new perspective. It, it, broke the three million year time barrier. We had other fossils that went back to about three million, but very few fossils of human ancestors that lived before three million years. And what she did was she had us redraw the human family tree, the shape of the tree, the geometry of the tree. And we believe that she was the last common ancestor that led to our own genus, Homo, 
Latin for man, and also a branch of Australopithecus that died out. So she was she was a terribly important discovery of a of a new unique species. And there were other were, were there not other bones found of other uh, people or uh, species, whatever you want to call them, yeah. in the same area? Oh yes, uh, the following year in '75, we found a collection of bones that were sealed in a, a single geological horizon of uh, infants, uh, males, females. Males were much larger, up to five feet tall. Uh, young individuals, old individuals. So we have a pretty good picture of the anatomy of this particular species. You mentioned it was so difficult to find out something at that three million barrier. Why do you think that is? Was there an ice age? Were there, was there another volcanic kind of a thing that made for something like the, with the, the meteorite and the meteor hitting you know, the whole $65 million dinosaurs going away? I mean, did something happen along those lines? Well, I think that we now can trace the human lineage back to six million years, almost twice the age of Lucy. And that's because we've been looking in older sediments. Places like uh, uh, Old Divide Gorge, which is well known to most, most viewers, uh, that only took us back to about 1.8 million. And then there were a few other sites that took us back to maybe two and a half. But once we got to three million, there were very few sites, and only because a geologist had recognized this site and asked me to join him on an expedition that we made these discoveries. And I gotta ask you, why the name Lucy? Well, we were celebrating, as you can well imagine, an anthropologist like myself gets pretty excited when something like this is found. And we were listening to a Beatles tape in camp that night, and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was playing on the tape recorder, and someone suggested, do you really think it's a female? I said, anything that's that short has to be a female. And, uh, and she said, well, why don't you call her Lucy after Lucy in the Sky with yeah, Diamonds? Yeah, that's fantastic. Last question, I could ask you so many, this, I find this kind of stuff fascinating. But the last question from me is, what is, what are the kinds of questions, the most frequent question you are asked about Lucy? Well, I think the most frequent questions are, uh, you know, how do we really know how old she was in terms of the geology? Uh, how was she related to other animals that were living at that time? What kind of world did she live in? Uh, what did she have for a diet? What yeah. did she eat? And, uh, you know, who was her ancestor? And we're now beginning to figure that out at the Institute of Human Origins. Yeah, well, fantastic stuff. Dr. Donald Johansson, again, ASU Institute of Human Origins. Uh, you, you f she was waiting 3.2 million years for you to find her. That's right. Congratulations on that. Thanks so much.